Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Jo, and if it's the first time you're joining us, it's great to have you here. Today's demo is going to be an earring demo. I'm actually wearing them in the rose gold version, and I'm going to be making them with you in this lovely turquoise and silver. I am a creature of habit, and I just can't. Turquoise and silver are my best thing ever. So we're going to be using size 11 seed beads. We're going to be using some 3mm fire polish. And we're going to be using some disc duos. And you might just, as we go along, you might just recognize one of my other tutorials. I've kind of taken one that we've done and I've zhuzhed it up a bit. Because uh, in this case, less is not more and we've got a sparkly pair of earrings. Starting with what we need to make our earrings, we've got size eight seed beads, and these are Seafoam Green Matte Picasso, size 11 seed beads, which are my Duracoat Galvanized Silver. I've got three millimeter fire polish in full Labrador, so they're that beautiful full coated silver sparkly color. And I've got disc duos here. Now, if you've not used disc duos before, they I love them. They're not like a round bead, they're flat. So if I move it on its side, so it, it doesn't add bulk to your designs. They're flat, but they are also double drilled. They have two holes at the top there. So it increases your design possibilities hugely. And these are in a color called Jade Picasso. I'm using six pound fire line. You need a couple of shepherd hooks. I've got a size 10 beading needle and I've got something to cut my threads. This gorgeous lacy design <clears throat> might look quite intricate, but honestly, when you know where to start, it becomes very simple. So I'm going to pick up one of my disc duos and it doesn't matter which way I pick them up because they're the same front or back and I'm going to move the disc duo down towards the end of my thread. I've got about three quarters of a meter of thread on my needle. So I'm going to, I'm holding on to a little tail that I'm going to use to tie off in a section. So you really don't need to hold on to much, just, you know, five to 10 centimeters is plenty. And we're gonna start round one, which is going to be to encase this disc duo in size 11 seed beads. And I'm gonna start by picking up four and I'm gonna pass back through the same hole of the disc duo from the opposite side. And you'll see how those four seed beads just hug the right-hand side of my disc duo. I'm then gonna come down through the left-hand hole. And again, I'm gonna pick up another four and pass back down through that same hole on the left hand side. So this will give me four seed beads, sorry, hugging the left hand side. So, and you can just move them into place. So I've got four on each side there. I'm also gonna need four along the bottom and four along the top. So 16 seed beads in total surrounding my disc duo. But at this stage, I'm going to just tie an overhand knot followed by a surgeon's knot. And I don't know that surgeons actually use this knot, but in the beading world, that's what it's known as. When you pass the thread through the loop twice and pull down tight. So you can see, I don't know if you can actually see, but my knot has formed right on the end here. So I've got this perfect gap to fill now with four more of my size 11 seed beads. So one, two, three, four. And I need to get to that gap at the top, so I'm gonna pass through all the seed beads that are on the right. And I'm at the, the gap on the top, and I'm going to pick up another four seed beads to close that gap. size 11s and I'm just going to pass all the way around the circle because you can see it's not sitting flush against my disc duo 
But if I pass through the beads, through all the connecting points where I added the four to the bottom, which is round about here, but through the next ones, just to join them all together in a neat circle around my disc duo. So I'm just gonna pass through a couple more, make sure I've covered all my connecting points. So now there you can see how that sits really quite beautifully and neatly around your disc duo. So round one is complete and we are ready to start round two. In round two, we're going to pick up one seed bead. We're going to skip over one and go through the next one. And it will just sit on the outskirts like that. We're going to do that the whole way around. So pick up one, skip over one, and pass through one. Pick up one, skip over one, and pass through one. So I've got to do that another five times. So I will have done it a total, I would have added eight beads in round two. So I'll come back to you when I've completed adding one bead, pick up a bead, skip over a bead, go through a bead, and you'll have done that a total of eight times. I'll come back to you to add in my last bead of round two. So, so far I've added seven. I've picked up my eighth one, skipped over a bead, passed through a bead, and step up through the first sticky outy bead that you added in round two. So there I have my eight beads added in round two and I'm going to get rid of this little tail because it's getting in my way a little and bothering me. So just zap it off. And I'm ready to start round three. So I've got my thread exiting through the very first sticky outy bead or the first bead I added in round two. And round three I'm going to connect those beads that are sticking out with three beads and it'll be 111, 18 and 111 and pass through the next bead that's sticking out. And you may want to just manipulate it slightly because you want these three to form a little point. So You've come out of a sticky outy bead, you've picked up one silver 11, one turquoise 8, one silver 11 and gone through the next sticky outy bead and you've got your first point. So the second one, we do exactly the same thing, 11, 8, 11 and pass through the next bead that's sticking out. And again, I want to form a little point, so you just pull the bigger bead, the size 8 bead, out with your thumb and forefinger and then pull your thread in tight and you'll get that little point. So we're going to do that the whole way around until we've connected all eight beads from round two. So I've picked up my three and I'm going through the next sticky outy bead. And again, I'm going to just pull that bigger bead out so that I get my nice little point. So I'm going to continue the whole way around and when I get to the end, I need to step up through one of these size 8 seed beads, but I'll show you how to do that when we get there. I've got my last set of three to fill in this gap here where my needle is, so I'm going to pick up an 11, an 8, an 11, and I'm passing through the stickier bead from the round before, but I also need to step up. So I'm going to pass through the first 11 and the 8 of the first little triangle spike I did. Now I wonder if that is looking familiar to you. If you have done a number of my tutorials, you might recognize that shape as the star earrings from a little while ago, but this is a two-tone one. And as I said in the intro, we're going to zhuzh it up and take it a bit further. But if you want to make a simple star, that's as far as you'd go. Or you can have a look at this demo, which I'll put the link to in the description. 
So I have popped out through a size 8 seed bead and I'm now going to skip from 8 to 8 as I go around. And I'm going to do that using an 11, one of my sparkly fire polish and an 11. And this is going to give us a really lacy effect. So straight through the next eight. And it's also going to round off our pointed edges. So again, 11 fire polish and an 11 and straight through the next eight. You can see how it's rounding off that edge there. So an 11 fire polish. And remember those fire polish are three millimeter and straight through the next eight. And you're gonna do that all the way round. I've almost completed round four. I've got my last little section to add in. So pick up an 11 fire polish and 11 and pass the needle through the next eight. So there I have come all the way around and to continue to add this next bit onto my earring, I want to be exiting from a fire polish. So I'm just going to pass through an 11 and the fire polish bead that is closest to me. And I'm ready to add on the next little section, which is another disc duo. Now this, if you remember, we had 16 beads that surrounded our disc duo, but this little fire polish is going to account for two of them. So I'm going to pick up one size 11 seed bead and then I'm going to pass through one of the holes of my disc duo. Pull it all the way through. And I'm now going to come around the outside of the disc duo. So I'm going to pick up four, two, three, four. And I'm going to pass straight back through the same hole. And when I pull the threads tight, you'll see how it all sits together quite neatly. Whoops, it's flipped over. Let me just flip it back. So there you've got one side. I'm now going to come down through the other side, through the empty hole of the disc duo, and I'm going to pick up another four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to come back down through that same hole on the right hand side and these are going to form the edge on the right of my disc duo. Now it's flapping about a bit so I need, if I pop it back there, I need to attach it to this um, fire polish bead at the bottom here and just as I picked up one seed bead at the beginning there I'm going to pick up one seed bead here and I'm going to pass back through the right hand side of that fire polish bead. And this will anchor it. You can see it's anchored there. I'm now going to pass around through these seed beads till I get to the top. And I'm going to add in my final four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to come round on the right hand side. You see how that's encased that rather nicely there and down through the other two that form the right hand side to give myself a bit more thread. And I'm going to pass straight up through that hole on the right hand side to get to the top so that I can then add in my shepherd's hook. So we had one, two, three, four on the side and we've got four on the top and what I want to do is exit. I'm going to be attaching, if, I, if you have a look here, you'll see there are two little seed beads at the top. So I'm going to attach it through the middle two. So I want to be exiting one of the middle ones. I'm now exiting the middle one on the left and I'm going to pick up two seed beads to attach my ear wire. Now there are no rules here, you could pick up as many as you wanted to. I'm going to pick up two. 
I'm then going to pass through the loop of my shepherd's hook or my ear wire and I'm going to pass back down through the size 11 seed bead that is closest to the ear wire. And as I pull it through and tight, it pulls it all together. And I'm then going to pick up one more size 11 seed bead. And remember, I exited the bead on the left. I'm now going to pass through two beads, but from the one on the right first. So I hope if I move that thread out the way, you can see exactly which beads I'm coming through. And now all that's left to do is to end off your thread. So I'm going to pass back down through the disc duo. And you can see how that's neatly added your shepherd's hook to the top there. I'm going to come down through one seed bead and the fire polish. And through the seed bead that's just ahead of the size 8 seed bead. So through the silver one. And here I'm going to do my double half hitch knot. So I've taken my needle under the thread between the silver 11 and the turquoise Picasso 8. Form a loop and pass your needle through the loop. And when you pull tight, that is one half hitch. And to make it a double, you do it a second time. So under the thread bridge, form a loop. Pass the needle through the loop and pull tight. And then you want to just pass through a couple of beads to pull that knot that you've just tied into the beads and then there's no chance that you're going to snip it off by mistake. So I'm going to zap that off. You could do the repeat the double half hitch knot if you wanted to be extra safe and extra careful. So there we have our, well, our zhuzhed up stars, I guess. There was the simple star, and we've just taken it a bit further to make these beautiful sparkly earrings. If you have any questions, please pop them in the links below because, or in the comments below, I should say, because I am pretty good at checking and I do reply to all of them. So if you get stuck anywhere, just give me a shout and I'll do what I can to help. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon with some more.